So welcome to a pre-recorded lecture for Unit 1.1, Ecology and Ecosystems. You should be following along in the packet um, and filling in the information in the boxes. And I will referring to the I will be referring to the page numbers. If you have any questions or concerns about any of these things, you can definitely bring your questions to the planned Zoom meetings, or you can come to office hours. So let's get started. I love the movie, The Lorax. And so in that movie, there's a song called Let It Grow. Um, I couldn't figure out the technical way to get this going while I was doing the pre-recorded lecture. So please feel free to watch that inspirational song. Um, and what it's really getting to in this idea of the Lorax is that if we stay out of nature's way, it will happen. And unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot the world's not going to get better. It's not. So we have to respect nature, understand how it works, and then let it happen. So ecology is the study of connections in nature between biotic and abiotic components. So biotic is living and abiotic is non-living. We'll get more detail into what's living and not living because you would think that it was uh, easy to know what's living and not living, but it's actually not a little more complicated, especially when you get into this idea of organic and not organic. So that's for another time. But in this picture, you can see trees that are living and you can't see the air, but the air is non-living and without the air, the tree can't exist. So it's this interconnectedness. So you should write down ecology, the study of connections. You should write down what's in that black box in the box on page one in your packet. Okay, so now we have levels of organization in ecology going from small to big. So we can start off with an organism. And an organism is an individual uh, living being. So this is under O in your um, packet there in the boxes. Um, it says an organism is one living being a uh, population is a group of individuals of the same species. Community is a, a group of different living species interacting. An ecosystem also includes the non-living components. And then the biosphere is the earth's air, water, and soil. Okay, so our biosphere is the earth and every living thing in it. Okay whereas um, everything else kind of brings down. And after organisms, you can go down into atoms and so on. Um, but for apes, this is gonna work for us. So you should have um, things written down and then maybe you can go back and think of examples of each of these things. Okay, so for I've given you an example of uh, an organism. An organism would be a squirrel. So then a population could possibly be a group of squirrels. I gave you that one and then bring it all the way up. And then I'll tell you for the biosphere, it's the earth. It's the earth and every living thing in it. Okay. So you can pause there if you need a little more time to write those things down. Excuse me while I click through. Okay. So what are three factors that sustain life on earth. Now, you may not have ever thought about it this way, but actually the one-way flow of high quality energy is one of the most important things. And that little picture, that little yellow guy right there is the sun. And without the sun, we couldn't exist. Uh, if you've ever, if you know people in this class that have taken the class before and you say, what's the answer? They'll say the sun, that's our little joke. The answer is the sun over and over and over again if you can tie things back to the sun. So be ready for that. What's the answer? The sun. So what happens is the sun's energy comes through photosynthesis in plants and then herbivores and, and omnivores, carnivores all eat and that's how they get the energy from the sun. This is a very important concept that we will be hitting over and over and over again, okay? Now, the second big thing is the round trip cycling of matter and nutrients through the biosphere, okay? So, so we have a limited amount of things on earth. We have a certain amount of carbon, 
certain amount of sulfur, certain amount of nitrogen, water, and phosphorus, okay? And these things move through the air, land, and water constantly. Sulfur, nitrogen, water, and carbon constantly move through the hydrosphere, lithosphere, and biosphere, whereas phosphorus is only going to be going through the earth and the water, okay? And we'll talk a lot about biogeochemical cycling, okay? And that's a really important part of apes. Now, the next one um, is actually really important is gravity. If things weren't held to the earth by gravity, everything would float away and it'd be gone. So the, the actual matter on earth stays on earth due to gravity. And gravity ends up being very important for many of the things that make the world work. So not floating away, but sticking around. Okay, so biotic and abiotic. Let's get into this just a little bit, okay? So biotic is living or once living. So it's either living or dead whereas abiotic is non-living. So you're filling out the boxes on the packet in page two, okay? And um, so I'd like you to list five biotic factors in a forest and then list five abiotic factors in a desert, okay? Abiotic, non-living. Biotic, living or once living. So take a little bit of time to go through that. We're gonna move on to three types of symbiosis. So um, animals interact with each other. So living things have symbiotic relationships. They interact with each other. And I bet you've learned about this before, so I'm gonna go kind of quick. So there's, there's um, three main kinds. Can you see that one at the bottom it says parasitism? So three types of symbioses. So there is the one where both benefit plus plus, that's mutualism. One where one benefits and one doesn't have any effect, that's commensalism. And then one benefits and the other one's actually harmed, that's parasitism. So a classic um, commensalism is going to be um, epiphytes. And epiphytes are things like orchids, Orchids live in the little crook of a tree. So if a tree has a branch coming off, like I'm showing you here with my thumb, so the tree has a branch coming off and like things get caught in the tree and there's like a little bit of soil because orchids don't need very much soil. So they can kind of get in there and live in the tree, but they don't harm the tree at all. But the orchids benefit because now they're not on the ground and something can eat them. So that's a commensal relationship. That's kind of a more complicated one. Mutualism, win-win. Parasitism, one wins, one loses. So in your packet, you guys have in there, you can see parasitism. Uh, you have a list of, of organisms interacting in the description of the relationship. And you should fill in here if it is a P, an M, or a C, a parasitism, a commensalism, or a mutualism. So you can pause and look at that um, because on the next slide, it'll be the answers. So why don't you pause right now? Because I'd like you to try this first and then I'll show you the answers. I'm about to show you the answers. There's the answers. So check yourself and if you had any points of confusion, please bring those to class. I'm going to continue. Okay, now we're going to get into a niche. A niche is a, spe a species role in its environment. It's the preferred habitat, position in the food web, and it's the mating and uh, eating behaviors, all right? So you can think of a habitat as the place where an organism lives. For example, on this picture, all these birds live on at the shore, um, in uh, between at the seashore, um, and the niche is how the organism uses its habitat. So each of these birds have found a way to use their habitat differently. So they can all exist in the same habitat but occupy different niches. Okay, so that's the way to think about it. 
So partition resourcing is when a species avoids competition by dividing up the resources. So this is one of those things where com competition is good um, because it makes things stronger. But for nature, what you really want is biodiversity. Let me just say biodiversity is another one of our big, big, big things, okay? You want biodiversity, just like you want diversity at the school for Alameda, if we respect each other's um, different backgrounds and learn from each other, we're all stronger. The same thing's true in life. More diversity means a stronger ecosystem. That's gonna come up over and over again in this class. So maybe write biodiversity somewhere and highlight it, make it pink or flashy or something like that. Biodiversity, really important. The sun, biodiversity, super important stuff here, okay? So um, you can see in this tree, different birds are actually occupying different niches in the tree. So they're avoiding competition by dividing up the resources. Okay, so then now our last thing here is um, competitive exclusion principle. Um, sorry if you can't read that last little part there, but I can read it to you. So the competitive exclusion, exclusion principle is um, if competition is present, species will be excluded from niches that they might otherwise inhabit, okay? So what happens is like you might have a possible niche. So a fundamental niche is a possible niche. And this happens without competition. Whereas the realized niche is the actual niche with competition present, okay? And that's what's not showing here all the way. Um, and let me just do this so you can see it all the way. Um, sorry. Come on, move up. Um, all right, so. Oh, I don't wanna have to re-record this whole thing. Um, but, okay. And if you bear with me a little bit here, you can always fast forward over my slow stuff. Okay, so the fundamental niche is the possible niche without competition. And then the realized niche is the actual niche with competition, okay? Um, and so you can see there's a picture in your um, packet on page three. And um, there you have um, some little, uh, little snail-like creatures, which I'm sorry, it's Chthalamus, Chthalamus, do we think is the name? Okay, so if there's only Chthalamuses, um, they could occupy that entire niche. But when the Simibaphinus come in, then they will uh, kind of compete out the Clamathalus, all right? <laughs> so it's a real example, so they're a little hard to say. But if you look at that picture, um, they're a little bit bigger there. So let's see here. If you see that picture there, you can see that the little brown guys would be all the way through there. Okay. So that would be their possible niche. But when there's competition with the blue guys, um, then it changes and there's an actual niche. All right. But as long as those guys are not out competing each other and wiping each other out, it can actually increase biodiversity and make the strength of an ecosystem fine as long as they have enough time. And we will definitely be talking about time. So that is it for the end of lecture 1.1. Um, please fill out everything in your packet through slide three. And I will be posting this um, actual lecture uh, so that you can see it later.